Welcome to a new episode of Hackitech Playground. Today I really want to show you some super cool, interesting AWS service for chaos engineering. This service is called Fault Injection Simulator. So it is a new service. It was announced like December 2020 and early this year 2021 it came in the market and it helped everyone who is running any cybersecurity SRE or scaling testing in your AWS production environments. And because of that, I think that this is a really cool opportunity for all of us to investigate together and explore how it works and what it can bring to cybersecurity or SRE teams. It is very fit to purpose to purple teams that are practicing something between blue and red teaming. And I found it very beneficial in my work. So I really want to show you how it works how you can configure it uh, on the demo and short introduction, like how or what is the theory behind the whole fault injection simulation in AWS. Today, we'll talk about fault injection simulator. Fault injection simulator is an AWS service, which is really good for not only SRE teams, but also for the teams in cybersecurity, like a purple teams. Purple teams are a combination of blue and red teams, and they should exercise security disruption and help the company to improve your security. And especially in cloud, fault injection simula simulation or chaos engineering is one of the most critical topics to cover resilience, security, and scalability of your services that are often in the microservices. So we'll talk about this service from AWS, which came like around early, early this year 2021 and it's one of the rock most promising SRE simulators for uh, disruption and simulation in your business continuity planning or testing and being able to validate if what have you designed is reflecting what you expect from your like systems your instances or your databases or your containers Fault Injection Simulator uh, is sometimes called FIS, so you will hear it a lot. When somebody is talking about FIS, it's no fantastic information system or something like that. It's Fault Injection Simulator. So it is a managed service that enables you to perform fault injection experiments in translation. It's chaos engineering testing. And this chaos engineering service is available for everyone who really wants to try it, it is using SSM, which is System Manager, and it is using SSM documents to define the experiments. So you can change the document and you can also put there some conditional parameters that you can use for your experiments. And these templates are already available and it generates disruptions on your services. Also, when you will check the Terraform modules, you will find some new modules that are allowing you to run the experiments through Terraform and infrastructure as code which is also perfect. An example supported actions for our purposes or for your experiments are like draining container instances. Lots of CPU stuff that you can drain your CPU, you can pretend the disk is full, you can drain the containers, you can terminate node group instances, you can reboot the database instances and this counts for RDS and you can inject uh, API error, which is very interesting when you are using API gateway with lambdas, you can inject the errors in your system and introduce serverless fault injection simulation, which is pretty cool, pretty awesome. And I think that this is the new age or new era of testing for cybersecurity SRE or purple teams. The sponsored or supported services, but supported services are here Elastic Compute Cloud, so EC2 instances, ECS, like Elastic Container Services, Kubernetes, EKS, and RDS. So when you will look at these four major resources, you will find really great templates for your experiments. And uh, I think that in the time there will more come. So don't be surprised if you will see at the time when the video will come out some, some new ones. So fault injection simulator, the basic concept is that you have an experiment template which defines the targets. The targets, I already told you what, what it can be and you have specific actions. And these actions, they can be parallel or they can be chained. So, or you can, they can be parallel and chained in the same time. As you can see, it, 
uh, on the picture from the AWS documentation. And there are also uh, stop conditions. So you can have several stop conditions that will help you to be in safeguard if something really bad will happen on your environment. So uh, action is like chaos engineering activity performed on the specific resource target. It can be based on the tags or based on the specific instances or identificators. So the other resources where you are performing this specific chaos engineering activity and the stop condition is like a guardrail that helps you to run the experiment safely. So I think that now it's time for a demo and show you how it works in AWS console. So let's go together and have some fun with this pretty great AWS service. Today we'll talk about AWS FIS. AWS FIS is Fault Injection Simulator, which is fully managed chaos engineering platform or a service in AWS, which is pretty cool. And one of the new services according this year that I really want to introduce to you and have some fun around that. So we have two servers today, one front end and one back end. And with these two services, we'll practice some chaos engineering in cloud and in the native AWS, AWS environment. So we are running on T2 micro uh, services to, to make it very simple. You see here there are no data and no alarms attached to these instances, but we will need to prepare some alarms to have a safeguards for this chaos engineering. And there are some preconditions that we need to prepare. So for example, we need to have ready role for running AWS FIS properly, which is like service link role and all of these things before we will actually use AWS FIS. So AWS FIS, when you will write FIS in your console, you can go there, click on FIS, and you will get the splash screen from AWS Fault Injection Simulator. As they say, it is for improving resiliency and performance with controlled experiments. So this is a fully managed service for running fault injection experiments in AWS, and it helps you continuously improve your environment, not only from the security posture, but also from the resilience resilience or or load performance viewpoint so when you will click on create first experience template you have here experiments and experiments templates the templates are ready to roll scenarios that you can use for your experiments and experiments are actually you see here that i have one failed experiment are actually experiments that you are practicing in your AWS environments. So let's go to experiment templates. And this create experiment template will give you to this screen. We can say my first experiment. And then uh, I have this first role. And then AWS FIS created for me AWS service role for FIS. This FIS role, uh, the description or how it should be done is easily found in documentation. But for purposes to this demo, I already prepared that. I can show you how this role looks like. Then there are actions or I can show you the role right now. It is much better. So I will duplicate this and I will go to roles to show you the role itself. And let's search for FIS. And the first role that I created is basically the role which is having the FIS policy. The FIS policy, if I will click on that, there's a JSON description, basically allows FIS to describe EC2 instances and work with the elements allowing chaos engineering experiments. There's also a visual editor that we don't need to actually use. What you really need to set up is a trust relationship with FIS Amazon AWS. And the, the trust relationship is pretty simple. It's allowing principal service FIS to do action assume role. It's so it is using STS under the hood. And for those who don't know what is STS, is simple token service. So for, back to the actions as we explain the role, then click on action and my action, action, and some uh, gener some random description. You can select action type. And for example, I can say that I want to reboot instances. Here, uh, basically, I cannot 
start after because there is no action already defined. When there will be some actions, you can chain them into the chain of events like we are used from CI/CD or from the pipeline environments. And then you need to define the target. So you can save this action. And you see here in the targets that I'll do some checks with that. You can select specific resource IDs that are our two instances that are running in our environment our test environment, or based on the resource tag or filters. So when you look, you can select specific percentage from the resources, specific count, or you can select all of them. And based on the tags or filters, you can, you can select the resource tag that is attached to the instance, or you can have new filter with attribute path and values. So basically based on the attributes of AWS resources that you want to test, like EKS, ECS, EC2, whenever you like to use, you can select specific resources based on your selector or filter. But for making that simple for you to make it easily understand, you can click here on the resource ID and select one of your instances. And in selection mode, again, uh, well, we will not change that and we'll leave it on all. So I will save. You see here the resource type. And the resource type is telling us exactly what services are supported in AWS FIS. It is EC2 instance, RDS cluster, RDS database, EC2, ECS cluster, uh, EKS, or IAM role. So I will save this one. And we already defined the action, the target, and then the stop condition. The stop condition will tell you what is the cloud watch condition or the alarm, which will notify you in the case of bad events. So you can select one or you can leave it for some uh, conditions it is not needed. And then you can associate specific tag to this template. 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 And staging. So I will select this template as a test template staging, and then I can click on experiment template. So you, you, I have not specified a stop condition, and this stop condition is a safeguard that will help you to stop the experiment if something goes terribly wrong. For SRE teams, this is something what is very critical to understand and to practice. For our experiment, we don't need to use that. My alarm maybe will not have enough data because I'm not running the instances for so long. So I will skip this part and I will say create. And it will create an experiment template for me. Very easy. Uh, if you want, you can use experiment templates from, if you will look here in example experiment templates uh, in the documentation, there are several documentation uh, parts that can help you to start with your templates that you can use. And there is also CLI uh, commands that you can use for creating your resources. So API is ready and I hope that uh, you will also be able to Terraform that or CloudFormation that whenever you like as your infrastructure as code. So what we can do, as you see that we can update experiment template, we can start an experiment, we can manage the tags of this template, we can delete that or import it. And import is very important for us. And I will show you short showcase how to do it. I just put something in my copy paste in my clipboard. Then I will click on import this template. And as you see here, I have the cloud formation or the JSON, uh, basically JSON describing the experiment itself. And th this is taken from this experiment a database or the experiment documentation updated to my data. So it basically there are some resource tags that I can use. There is EC2 instance that I will run. So resource tags can be test. Yes, because I see that it's something that I can improve. There's no test. Okay. Environment. Brought. So this is this looks fine. So resource tags uh, are are something that we can specify. You can specify the EC2 instance. You can say how it should work. You can specify a selection mode, all of these things. Also the name, the targets, 
and also the stop conditions. I already prefilled the stop condition with this CloudWatch role. And there is a role that I'm using for AWS Fizz. So if it is correct, you can import your template and you see here the experiments templates like experiment template ID and the name. So you can create basically the template with the JSON. And this is something what lots of you coders, cloud gurus, engineers will like and you will enjoy that because you can version this in the code. You can use it as a part of your GitOps to experiment on your cloud environment. And this is pretty cool. More than cool. <laughs> so and you can we can delete this, we can delete these two. So if you want to select that, if you will basically say I want to update the experiment template, you will get back to the menu. So in the experiment templates, uh, I will create one very simple experiment template. Res restart. And I will say, okay, it was visceral. I will say a random name, random description, uh, reboot instance, and uh, the target group. And uh, basically, I will go through that here. To my instances, I will select one of them. Uh, target is edit. Uh, okay, I will save the section on rebooting. I will edit this one because uh, I want to execute some action which will not require SSM, just for simplification. Select this one, save and create an experiment, create and create. So you see, we created several experiments and I just want to show you that it's pretty simple. So this is like the restart. Uh, um, I, will use, I will use restart on my first experiment. So I will check on my first experiment and then manage tags or start experiment. And what will happen? Every experiment can have specific tag. I will say ID and the ID of this experiment was I'm giving that random number and start experiment. You need to confirm manually that you are starting the experiment, especially for production environment. This is very important. Start experiment. And then it will execute your experiment. It can fail. It can basically succeed based on the conditions that are available at a specific time at a specific period that you are doing the test depends on what is happening in your environment, depends if the, if the instances are ready and it should affect our EC2 instances. In this case, if you do the restart, uh, we'll, we can check it in EC2 console, EC2, and there should be something happening with our instances. Maybe it happens uh, pretty fast and we will be not able to catch it up. So he see, you see here, everything works well. Maybe there was a really fast restart and we just missed that. But uh, then I can refresh that and you see here that it fails. Unable to reboot the targets, not enough privilege to perform required action. So that means that uh, this service doesn't have privileges or there is a, no, uh, the role is not pretty well defined. When I want to, when I will go to my like a first experiment, and actions, I will update this experiment. I can add an action, and when you want to say the start after, you say here, or you click here, my action, and it will start after this specific action. So this is how you can chain up different events in your experiments. So I will go back to my experiments, and you see here that the, the third one failed. And if you want to see successful experiment. I just changed the role really fast because this one with the service link is not correct one. So if you go and change the role, uh, I will show you how to do that here in the experiment templates because I have two different roles. And for example, my first exp experiment, I will update this one with update. Uh, I can say I'm using this fifth role, which was my created role and update the experiment which is the correct role. I will update it. And with this update and experiment templates for the mice first experiment, I should be able to start an experiment with a new tag, with ID, and start the experiment, start. 
And now it should work basically because we are using the right role. This is very important. The role app is super important for you to be used for your FIS. Then when you look at initiating it, this is not a real time, so you need to refresh it. Then you can see it running. This is really a good point that if we see that it is running, this is uh, something that is moving really uh, forward. And then we refresh that and then we are completed. So in experiments, we can see which experiments are completed and which are not. Then I can go to experiment ID, there are details, when it started, when it, when it ended, which experiments template was and what are the actions, what are the targets, what are the tags, and also I can manage the tag, I can copy to new new experiment template, so you can create your own template from that, or you can refresh, or you can basically start, uh, you can see here, stop experiment. So when the experiment is taking a long time, more time than you need, and you want to stop the experiment, you can do it here exactly uh, from running experiment. So pretty, pretty simple, pretty easy to use. I recommend to try it at home. I recommend you to go through that, play with it, test different scenarios because there are plenty of them and we are not able to cover that in this video because it will take a lot of time. But what I want to really show you is a CloudWatch. So you go to AWS CloudWatch and here you should have one alarm which will be as your safeguard. My safeguard is, for example, I will just play with the CPU utilization a little bit. So I don't want, do not want to cross the CPU, CPU utilization higher than 90. So that's something that you should set up and you should have it. So please check if you have all of this done. And uh, regarding the first experiments, you can also go to documentation, read through that. There is lots of uh, interesting information and actions and guides how you can do that. What is most important, and this is what I showcased in this video too, is the IIM permissions. So you need to use the right role and right permissions with all the staff and trust relationship inside to make it work. This is why our first experiment failed. So proper IIM permissions are super important. I'm looking forward for you in the next videos and I hope that you have a great time with me. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope that you have some takeaways uh, from this episode and I really believe that my videos are somehow helpful for you. So if you are interested in any specific cybersecurity or cloud or DevSecOps topic, just let me know in the comments or let me know what was not clear. I can prepare for you some short and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.